Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time, <laughs> but there's so many new makeup launches, but I really want to go through them and give you guys like thoughts and opinions. A few of them I actually have already bought. The one that I'm most excited about is actually the Rode Beauty Peptide Lip Tint, and this is in the shade Jelly Bean. I will put a picture up here so you guys can see. It is so stunning. I have never been really like a Hailey Bieber fan, although... I am a Justin Bieber fan. I always have been and I always will be. I never really like jumped on the train of Hailey Bieber. I feel like she has a cult following, like people love her. I'm not sure if they love her so much because it's Justin Bieber's wife or like they actually like her as a person. I feel like she gets all very like sweet angel energy. So she has a beauty brand called Road Beauty. I've never tried anything from them. I know a ton of people love her glazing milk, which I wanted to try. Came out with this jelly bean flavor for her birthday. And I saw when it for when she first was teasing it and she was putting it on and it was sparkly, I was like, you know what? This 100% is gonna be my first Road Beauty purchase because anything that has sparkles and is pink, I will be buying it. These are only $16. I heard they smell amazing. This one obviously smells like jelly beans. I'm I love the fact that it's a lip treatment. I'm always wearing lip mask. You guys know I am obsessed with the Lawless Forget the Filler lip mask. If I'm not wearing that one, lately I've been using the JLo Beauty one, which low key I actually don't like. So I don't recommend buying this. It's super thick and it feels very waxy. It does do the job, but it's just like not fun to put on. Um, I love the Laneige lip mask. Oh my gosh, the Best Stand Lip Mask from Nicole Guerrero. I don't think she sells that anymore. She used to have a beauty brand. I think it was called Best Stand Beauty. And it was so good. It was like this light pink color. I'll get a picture of it if I can find it. If you guys ever tried that, tell me that wasn't like the best lip treatment ever. Anyways, I'm always, I always, always have something on my lips. And the fact that it's a lip treatment and it's sparkly, 100% yes, packaging is adorable, light pink and hot pink. I already bought it. It's actually supposed to be here today, so I'm probably gonna take off this lip combo and redo it with that one. Be freaking excited, and $16 is like a really good price point. Okay, girl, the next one, set of 12 best-selling beauty blenders, and it's $195, girl. <laughs> $195 for 12 sponges is absolutely out of this world in another dimension, it's ridiculous, it's unnecessary. I hate, I'm sounding so negative right now, I hate the color story. Like overall, the colors in general, I know with Beauty Blender, they have different colors to do different things. I understand that, right? But the way that they aligned them, like the color story they did, horrible. Why would you do that? Like, why would you put a cobalt blue next to hot pink? I think it's so ugly. And the red next to the black, it really just irritates me. I can think of at least three different ways this color wheel could have gone better. And I feel like it would be more pleasing to the consumer's eye. This really just pissed me off. Also, $200, girl, are you gonna pay $200 for 12 beauty blenders when you know that the e.l.f. beauty sponge is amazing? Real Techniques is like cult classic. Everybody loves that one. There's so many different beauty sponges out there on the market that are better than beauty blenders or if not exactly the same for a fraction of the price. Like there's so many dupes, this is absolutely unnecessary. Let me know if this is something that you guys were like, oh no girl, like I'm buying that. I feel bad for shitting on it, but girl, $195, like that is just. Also have two new launches. Well, there's a few new launches from NYX, but I'm gonna talk about two. We have the Duck Plump Lip Glosses. These have already launched at this point because it's a high gloss pigment lip gloss. 17 different shades, the ultimate injectionless Pout. Feel the extreme plumping sensation powered by spicy ginger. I love ginger. I love the smell of ginger and I also love the taste. Like whenever I go out and eat sushi, I will eat ginger straight by itself, like an obscene amount, not a normal amount. I love the taste of ginger. I hate plumping lip products, which is crazy because I feel like I was just talking about the forget the filler lip mask, but that's a different type of plump. I feel like that is kind of like a cooling, a little bit minty, like it doesn't burn. I despise the Too Faced lip injections, how it's like actually burns your lips. It agitates like the border of your lip line, which makes your lips appear bigger. And that's why they call it the lip injections. But girl, the first time I tried that, I was like, there's no way this is legal and there's no way they are selling this. And I have a feeling that this Duck Plump lip gloss is going to be very similar. So I think the marketing is super cute. I love how it's really chunky. At this point, I feel like everything's been done. So I love to see brands have different packaging. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I like the idea that it's like Duck Plump and it's like the duck lips. You know what I mean? I feel like to some people that could be kind of off-putting because 
who wants to have like duck lips, but it's cute. You know what I mean? It's a different style of marketing and it's not just like, oh, a plumping lip gloss. They're $13 and I want to tell you guys the main thing that is deterring me away from these duck plump lip glosses is the fact that they're high pigment. I do not like, ew. I do not like high pigmented lip glosses. I used to, I really used to love, there was a wet and wild lip gloss. I think it was called Caught You Bare Naked and it was a super light pale baby pink nude lip gloss and it was pigmented. I loved it. I used it all the time. I would wear it with NYX Nude Truffle. I feel like that was back in like 2016. Now so much now i'm not really into that sort of vibe i really like sparkly stuff obviously which is why i'm getting the road beauty lip tint but yeah like pigmented lip glosses are just not the vibe they do have i think maybe like two clear ones one completely clear and one that looks kind of yellow i think i don't know something about pigmented lip gloss is just giving me like goopy and just like not the vibe so i'm gonna pass on those but we have this is already pretty old at this point i want to go over everything that launched in november the basic canvas by James Charles. Now, I will tell you that this palette is beautiful. It's stunning. The layout is gorgeous. The packaging is really pretty and it's literally white with like nude colors painted on the top. But I feel like it's just something a little bit different. And his whole, you know, his, his whole, I don't wanna say scheme. That's not what I'm trying to say. As a whole, it's supposed to be like painted paints and canvas. And I saw some reviews on the palette and they're saying that the actual texture of it feels like a canvas. So I feel like that's cool. It's some, bringing something a little bit different to the table. It is a completely neutral palette. Pinks in there look gorgeous. Very tempting. Also, there's like a little divot in there where makeup artists can take out each individual eyeshadow, which is really helpful because girl, if you've ever tried to depot a eyeshadow palette by yourself, it is so dangerous. Like it's dangerous for the eyeshadows because most of the time you're barely gonna get any eyeshadows out of it. It's really annoying. But when you're trying to condense your kit, you try to do as much as possible. And the fact that he kind of already set it up to where pro makeup artists can dip it out, I really like that. And it's $55 and it launched on November 15th. I actually did see that James Charles and Jeffree Star launched their palettes like on the same day or something like that, girl. Did you guys see that? And they both were like going live on TikTok and they launched their palettes on TikTok shop. TikTok shop is taking over the world. I swear, like anytime I go on TikTok, all I see is TikTok shop ads, products, reviews. It's, it's honestly like kind of annoying. It looks like other brands are actually hopping on there. I feel like one of the first brands to really hop on TikTok shop was Kimchi Beauty. It popped off. Like they really got their products going super viral on TikTok. So I see a lot of other influencer-based brands kind of jumping on there. So I guess Jeffrey, he launched his Scorpio palette, which to be honest, I would never buy that. Like I'm not using that eyeshadow palette. I would never reach for it. Not really bringing anything new to the table. The colors separately look pretty. His shimmers are really good and his lipsticks are kind of bomb too. But it's just like the color story, it's not speaking to me at all. But he launched this, I believe is because it was his birthday, November 15th. And so apparently Jeffrey he usually launches his products on Fridays, whatever Friday it happens to land on, it's usually Fridays. But his birthday landed on a Wednesday. So he made the launch early and launched his products on Wednesday. James Charles was due to launch his palette on a Thursday, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but he launched it a day early on Jeffrey's birthday. So both of their palettes launched on TikTok shop on the same day. And I don't know if you guys know this, but on TikTok shop, you can actually see how many units were sold per whatever it is, whether it be like lip gloss or eyeshadow palettes or freaking like rompers. And James Charles outsold Jeffrey Star by like crazy. And honestly, I would be embarrassed and I'd be pissed. And also my birthday, I would be like, how could you do that to me? I have the P. Louise and Michaela collection, who's the XL palette to have and to hold in case you get cold. That's the name of the eyeshadow palette. I feel like that's kind of like a long name, low key, but whatever. 50 matte and shimmer shades inspired by her engagement and wedding. Okay, let me give you like my actual first thoughts when everything launched, I loved it. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of surprised that a lot of people were like talking down on the collection and saying that 50 shades was too much and that she's like milking her engagement and her wedding and like all this stuff. And I'm just like, y'all are so negative. Like honestly, if you guys look at Trend Mood's comments, it is so negative. And I get it, like, I feel like sometimes it's fun to like 
talk and you know, just like get your opinions out there and talk to other people who like agree with you but girl trend moods comments are on another level like sometimes i don't even look at them because i'm like i just know y'all are gonna be negative and i don't even want to read it right now but i thought the collection was so cute 50 shades yes is a lot for a palette but if you think about it what does michaela do like i feel like her whole vibe is extra and doing colorful looks and just being creative so it makes sense that she came out with a huge palette not only did she come out with a huge palette but half of it is neutrals and i think the neutral shades are so beautiful i did want to get the collection i did not buy it just because blue eyeshadows are so like they're out girl like i'm not doing that especially with my red hair I feel like especially with my red hair, it's just not a vibe. It doesn't look cute. So I'm like, I'm not even going to use it. I did want to get it to support her because I absolutely love her. And she built a literal empire. Um, if you guys like know where she came from, go back to like her original videos where she was still working at Ulta and she was still living at home. It is crazy what she has built for herself and how far she's come just off of TikTok just off of tiktok not instagram not youtube not anything else just tiktok so it's insane i really do like her as a creator maybe i'm a little bit biased i'm not sure um i know and understand why people don't support her just because of like mascara gate and you know things she said and not addressing certain things but girl i swear every influencer has done something every influencer it's just gonna happen like it's it's just human nature you know what i mean and i feel like sometimes we put influencers on this pedestal where it's like girl we really she really is just still a human at the end of the day but she came out with liquid highlighters blushes i think the blushes are really cute i just something about the purple blush in the blue packaging really just like irritated me i'm like no i can't do it if the purple blush was in the original p louise pink packaging i swear i probably would have bought it but the fact that the purple was clashing with the blue i'm like i can't do it also came out with liquid highlighters i also feel like those are outdated but again i feel like it's very michaela like she loves that colorful highlighted look and they did look really pretty also is that new from p louise i don't know if they've ever launched like colorful highlighters before the brushes girl the brushes were so beautiful and i wish i would have got my hands on them i actually was so busy that day i was busy all morning and then i came back home i went on live and by the time i got off of live and i was going to like buy stuff from the collection it was all sold out so i was like crap like i didn't get to get anything which really sucks but i definitely did want to support her okay let's talk about nimya Nikki Tutorials Nimya. First of all, where did they go? Where did Nimya go and where is Nikki Tutorials? Like she just stopped uploading. And I'm like, girl, where are you? Because she is one of the creators. I really do like Nikki Tutorials. She's like one of the OGs. She's very glam. She doesn't care what people say. Well, at least that's what she presents to us. And I feel like she's just very, she has great energy. She's always super glam. Like her hair is always done. Her outfits are always on point when she comes on camera. Her brand Nimya. I have said this before in older videos, like when Nimia first launched, I hate the packaging. Who, who put orange and blue together? That's what I want to know. Well, I really hope there's not like a significant meaning behind it and I'm like trashing on it because I would feel so freaking bad. But like, who came up with that color combination? Who put those two together? If you were to come up to me and say, envision a brand behind Nikki Tutorials, orange and blue would be the last two colors that I would put together. It irks me so bad and it sucks because I know her products are so bomb. Like for as much makeup as she uses and has tested, I know her products are so good, especially her moisturizer, but I cannot get behind the packaging. And y'all know I'm like, packaging is everything to me. I love an experience in a product. I love a scent in a product, like everything. It's not just like if the product works well, it's like the product as a whole, what is it bringing to me? Um, yeah, I will never use that. Anyways, she popped up out of nowhere, okay? She's coming up with a new launch, and they are cream blushes. A lightweight cream blush that blends and builds easily, providing a vibrant color with a skin-like finish. Oh my gosh, they're only $15. That's not bad. Oh, these are very bright, very bright, very pigmented. These look like paint. Yes, they do. The actual packaging it comes in is so small. It's giving like the e.l.f. putty blushes, you know what I mean? It looks tiny but they look super pigmented which i think for people who use a lot of makeup are going to love it but girl like people who are just starting out and maybe grab a cream blush like this and think it's not as pigmented and then go to use it like a regular cream blush it might be a problem again i have not tried it i actually haven't even watched like the launch video on it yet but 
Yeah, I don't know. It's a no for me, babe. Like okay. sky high. What is this? Maybelline or L'Oreal? I always get Maybelline and L'Oreal mixed up. Maybelline is coming out with three new colors of the sky high mascara. It looks like color mascaras don't really do it for me. So this is a pass for me. I think the pink is super cute and fun. Um, I feel like it might even be cute like with my hair going on, but low key, I just like would not use that. I'm not going to lie. I don't even do bottom mascara anymore. I like just completely stop doing that. The only one I might be interested in is the burgundy one because I feel like that's a vibe. It's super close to black, super close to brown. But when you get up close, I feel like especially with green and hazel eyes, it really makes it pop. It's a complimentary color. So that would be the one that I would get, but babe, I use mascara. So actually, no, I'm just not going to do that. But okay, this one I actually just bought today. I'm super excited. Uh, this is the fat oil stick clicks. Is that what it's called? Fat oil slick clicks. That is so hard to say. And I know for a fact, people are going to have a hard time saying that just like shape tape, tape shape. It's going to be an issue. So this is from the fat oil line. Everybody loves the glosses. I have a gloss. I love it rewind i don't love it i like it i feel like people really hyped it up it's not like amazing or revolutionary it just is at like a really good price point and they're cute and fat and short anyways they are coming for tart girl i feel like the maracuja lip glosses went crazy all over tiktok and um yeah they're coming for the girls and i'm not mad at it i feel like people get so mad when brands try to dupe other brands which let me like play devil's advocate i get it because like that brand came up with that original idea just for them to be ripped off by a by a brand that'll sell it for less and Loki will probably sell more because of the price point because you know the girls love a deal but also like who cares who cares and if it's something similar and maybe people can't afford $26 for a lip gloss but they can afford I think it's like $12 the packaging not super in love with it. I don't really like the neon green, but I get it from a brand standpoint. It's very like recognizable. And when people use it, they're going to know it's NYX. I did get the shade. I got the baby pink shade, actually. I got the shade Clout. It's a soft baby pink. I think I'm going to be obsessed with it. It launched today. It does say it's early access for platinum members. And I am platinum, babe, on Ulta. Uh, basically, there's like tiers to Ulta. When you spend so much money, you are either platinum or diamond and you will get like free shipping, early access, stuff like this. And girl, I hopped on it. I bought it. The only thing is that Ulta takes a long time to ship. So I'm hoping that they don't take a long time and it can get here fast enough before everybody gets it before me. So I'm super excited to try that out and I cannot wait. I can't wait to try it out for you guys. We have the Maracuja Lip Plumps shimmery now with a shimmery finish i don't they're just called shimmery glass to be honest girl when i saw these i was like Ooh, i might like that i love the original maracuja lip glosses uh cherry blossom is my favorite color if you guys are into like lip combos like i do cherry blossom is the best you will be obsessed with it the only thing is i feel like they run out really fast because they're so fun to use and click up that i tend to use more product just because it's fun to use I might I might just have to buy one. I think the shade soft pink is so gorgeous. Also the shade rosy mauve, I feel like will be really pretty and kind of like accentuate my lip shape. I feel like darker colors always look not super dark, but more like mauve shades tend to look better on me just because they accentuate like my lip filler and I need more lip filler. I need it. Jennifer says I don't need it, but I know that I need it. I could see it fading. It's gone. I feel like I don't even have it anymore. But anyways, this is $24, so it's a little bit expensive, but low key, like, I would buy it. I just want to see it in person and see the shades. They also came out with an indigo shade, which irritates me. Like, I'm not going to use that. Actually, how many people are going to use that? I feel like it's a fun shade to use, like, every here and, like, every now and then. But who's going to put that color on their lips? Really, like... How many units is Indigo going to sell? That's everything for today, guys. I love to talk, so I love these sort of videos. I used to do these like two years ago when I first started my channel. So I'm just now realizing how fast I'm talking. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but if you guys are into these sort of videos and you like to just sit here and talk and I and just like have conversations about makeup and new launches, it's a judge-free zone. Girl, if you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, you like it. Who cares? You know what I mean? I'd love to know your guys' opinions too. I love to talk about makeup and I always reply to you guys down in the comments. So let's have some conversations down below. I love you guys so much. Do something nice for yourself today. Turn in the mirror and tell yourself that you're beautiful. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.